Hello? Um, AJ, do you see there's an X-Men scene playlist happening? We gotta get on it, because playlists are literally the only way we gain subscribers these days. Whoa, man, I haven't seen an X-Men movie in ages. I don't know what I would make a video on. Okay, well, what was the last piece of X-Men media you saw? The original trailer for The New Mutants dropped in 2017, and in the three years since it has laid dormant as its own franchise went out with a whimper and the X-Men IP was acquired by Disney, while the actual New Mutants movie by itself continued to get delayed over and over to the point where it'd almost be comical if it wasn't for the fact that the most recent delay was caused by a global pandemic. Part of me hopes I never see it. Part of me hopes it never comes out. And look, sure, while I would have never said that I was particularly looking forward to the New Mutants, that original trailer did solidify an interesting and bold new direction that the X-Men series had been dipping its toe in for the last few movies. This wasn't your granddaddy's X-Men. This was different. This was gonna be... A horror! Woo! My name is AJ and today I want to talk about one excellent scene or a uh, trailer and why this sneak peek of the long overdue New Mutants promised a fascinating new direction for the X-Men franchise which we will never get to see. To fully understand this direction though, it's important to look at the X-Men franchise's contemporaries. In the age of the cinematic universe, the X-Men series, for all its swings and misses, seems to be the only worthy contender for the MCU, the only one of these many cinematic universes to be critically successful across the board. The X-Men films, which actually predate Iron Man by eight years, maybe didn't begin as a cinematic universe, but as the mainline continuity faded to the background in favour of spin-offs like Logan or Deadpool and The New Mutant, I think it's fair to say Fox were going for an outside-in approach to creating a web of different character-focused films with a shared continuity. I think the same could be said for Star Wars, with its spin-off films and TV shows clearly wanting to weave an MCU-inspired tapestry as opposed to the single mainline continuity episodes. But even the MCU, the untarnished, shiny, gold standard that it is, has been pretty unable to escape one pretty significant criticism. The same criticism which ended up eating the new Star Wars film alive. With the rare exceptions, these movies are too samey. They are afraid to take risks. Now please do not get mad at me if you disagree, these are not necessarily my opinions, but these are documented criticisms of Marvel and Star Wars. I mean, they, they are also my opinions, but... It wouldn't be really fair to level those same criticisms at the X-Men movies, however, as in the last five years we've seen plenty of risks from the series, and sure, some of these films played it safe and those films also kinda sucked, but for every X-Men apocalypse we had a Logan, for every Dark Phoenix we had a Deadpool. Logan and the Deadpool movies, by the way, were risky because, among other things, they were playing with genre. And I'm not talking about playing with genre in the same way that Ant-Man was a Marvel heist movie or Rogue One was a Star Wars war movie. Logan managed to be a full-blown western both stylistically and thematically, and Deadpool and Deadpool 2 are R-rated comedies. Ant-Man is just a movie about heists. It still fits into the MCU house style enough that it is stripped of any real identity, having literally lost a direct with a pretty specific approach and replaced with a director whose approach is pretty flavorless. Rogue One was manhandled in post-production, ripped from the hands of its director, and allegedly underwent reshoots so it would more resemble a classic, read safe, Star Wars movie. This isn't to say I dislike either of those films. I don't, but I would have certainly rather seen the original director's original visions. The same could be said for Phil Lord and Chris Miller's version of Solo, which sounded more like a wacky, risky comedy than the paint-by-numbers Ron Howard movie we eventually got, which was so desperate to create some kind of cinematic universe that it weaved in some pretty gaudy and unnecessary overarching plot elements with Darth Maul. I'm not saying that a 21 Jump Street styled Star Wars movie would have worked, but I'd rather see an interesting bad movie than an uninteresting okay movie, which is what I feel 
was ultimately delivered. Then of course there's the film that shall not be named, which compromised every directorial vision it could and ignored logical story beats set up from its previous movie, just so it could be this pathetic and safe shell of a film. But The New Mutants, a true horror movie set in the X-Men universe. Horror is a genre more rich and self-contained than a western or a raunchy comedy, both of which were still able to maintain enough connection to the X-Men movie franchise. The New Mutants however looks downright alienating. No Hugh Jackman to ease you in, no established characters or locations to ground yourself with. The New Mutants doesn't necessarily look like an amazing movie in its own right, but it looks like a pretty damn unique and risky X-Men film. A cursory glance at the once planned slate of future X-Men films would show you this trend was likely to be continued, with almost all of these now cancelled movies being character focused passion projects. James Franco's multiple man film was rumoured to be a film noir. Channing Tatum's Gambit film could have been this smoky Creole heist movie. Tim Miller's Kitty Pride film could have been a female coming of age movie. I want to see Lady Bird in the X-Men universe. I want Girl Interrupted but with superpowers. That film was directed by James Mangold by the way. And then there are also the almost definitely cancelled New Mutant sequels which director Josh Boone stated would explore other sub-genres of horror. Boone even specifically says his goal was to examine the horror genre through comic book movies. That's like exactly what I'm saying. That first New Mutants trailer was tantalising, promising we'd be journeying into genres never before seen in a big budget superhero film. And I know, just because X-Men was bought by Disney and will probably be folded into the MCU, it doesn't mean we'll never see more risky and creative approaches to X-Men stories, but I certainly won't be holding my breath. Because the one common element between samey Marvel movies and safe Star Wars movies is Disney, who are obviously more concerned with keeping a consistent brand than they are with exploring new ideas or genres or styles. Scott Derrickson was let go of the upcoming Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness after declaring it would be the MCU's first horror film. And yeah sure he was replaced with f***ing Sam Raimi but I'd speculate that that decision was born more out of Raimi's willingness to play ball with producers than his history and horror. This is all correlation and not necessarily causation but you only need to look back at all the directors who were fired, usurped or quit Marvel or Star Wars movies to see uh, a whole lot of correlation and not necessarily causation. Compare this to X-Men who for better or worse have mostly kept their directors and creative leaders on their respective projects. Tim Miller did leave Deadpool 2 after creative differences with Ryan Reynolds, but let's be honest, Ry Ren has always been the main visionary behind the Deadpool movies. Beyond him though, X-Men let their directors do their thing, whether they were Matthew Vaughan or Simon Kinberg or Brian Singer. That original New Mutants teaser with its slowed down Pink Floyd song which was a big trend in 2017 and its popular young cast members from Game of Thrones and Stranger Things which were big shows in 2017 now feels haunting for an entirely different reason. It's the dying light of an exciting new vision. The unknowingly doomed swan song of a risky direction we may never see a tentpole blockbuster franchise venture towards again. And I think that sucks because I would really like to see a star Star Wars musical. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please consider subscribing if you hadn't already, and why not check out the other videos on the One Excellent Scene playlist, or even make your own and tweet it to Nando V Movies to be included as well. Peace and love. Can't wait to finally see New Mutants.